writing the opening line to your legacy. So then, We're going to have a couple of new Star Trek shows in the next couple of years. Star Trek Academy and Star Trek Legacy. Yes, Star Trek Legacy. But will one harm the franchise while the other saves the franchise? Let's compare the two. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. The Star Trek fan base is a little divided. I can tell you this just by looking at my comments whenever I talk about Star Trek. Some people get very angry at me that I'm a little bit negative about things like Discovery. And other people are there with me and actually are a lot more angry than me about some of the decisions Secret Hideout have made regarding Star Trek. And are the two new shows that are planned only going to increase that division? So you guys know, I've spoke to you a few times now about how there is a very conscious plan over at Secret Hideout to make Star Trek for everybody. The idea being that if you don't like one Star Trek show, you can go and watch another one instead. So for me, I don't like Discovery. I really don't like it. I've really tried so I can just go watch Strange New Worlds instead. And that is a very conscious decision by Secret Hideout. They aim different shows at different demographics. And then they don't mind if the fans hate one but love another. Personally, though, I think that is a stupid philosophy. Because surely it's possible to make more than one TV show that all Trekkies like. It's Star Trek, for God's sake. They don't need to aim this at different demographics. You could just aim it at sci-fi fans. We're quite an adaptive bunch. I like all sorts of different sci-fi. I could really handle two or three different shows that were a little different, but still Star Trek. But they created Discovery, a show I really don't like. And there seems to be a plan to do that again. So... As I say, we've got two big new shows coming. I've told you, we've got Star Trek Academy. They're already in the writer's room. They're going to be start filming that as soon as the uh, Michelle Yeoh Section 31 film is finished. And then immediately after that, I'm being told they will start active development on Star Trek Legacy. Star Trek Legacy will hopefully be on our screens at the end of next year. That'll be, what, 2025. So let's have a think about these two shows. Will they build bridges between the two sides of Star Trek fandom, or will they only increase that division? So first of all, as I've told you in a previous video, Star Trek Academy is going to be very much a character-driven show set, obviously, at a new Starfleet Academy. Now, that, for me, immediately limits what this show can do. Its setting is very limited, geographically speaking. And it's going to not really be a show of exploration. It might be a show of learning and exploring our own inner turmoils or teenage angst. But it won't actually have a lot of Monster of the Week stuff going on. Because they're all going to be, I assume, on Earth, but wherever. Whereas Legacy is aboard the new Enterprise. They are free to go wherever the hell they like. Yes, we will see plenty of character development, but like Strange New Worlds, we will get to see a Monster of the Week, some overarching storylines, really Star Trek, what we like about Star Trek. So immediately, really, the creators are coming at these two shows in a very different way if you consider the setting. If you are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all those things. But also go over to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack. That is where most of our videos do premiere first. And you get to see them without all the adverts for a small fee that really helps out the channel. Now, the Star Trek Academy is likely to migrate some of the characters from Discovery. I'm being told Tilly is going to be in this. And there's going to be a couple of other legacy characters basically coming over from Discovery. The problem I have with that is Tilly was pretty much the only character other than Empress Giorgio I liked or remembered or cared about in any way. So, yes, let's take one of the favorite characters and put her in this new show and give her a real leading role. But any other characters that come across? I don't care. We're going to see some from the Federation New Council, etc. The new president of the Federation, I should imagine but they'll really just be in the background and I don't really care either way. 
but if they bring any of the regular characters back as, you know, like new teachers or something, I don't really care. I'm looking forward to seeing Tilly. That's about it. However, Legacy, we've already had those characters sort of developed a little bit in Picard Season 3. Obviously, Captain Seven of Nine, played by the amazing Jerry Ryan, is one of the most popular characters in the newest Star Trek. And to be honest, she was the most popular character in Voyager as well. She has had amazing character development over a couple of decades. And I think fans will be excited about that, whereas they may be not as excited about some of the legacy characters from Discovery migrating into their new show. More than that, though, because Academy is set in the future, we can't really see any other legacy characters from any other series. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about fan service here, because I actually think fan service is a good thing. You actually give the fans what they want if done well. If done badly, it becomes cheesy. But if done well, it's exciting. It's interesting. So I actually quite like it when we get to see legacy characters coming into a show if it's done well, if it's done for a reason. Now, sometimes it's just because the actor's available and they just turn up and, the, you know, they don't really write it very well. And that's a bit, well, why did you bother? But sometimes when legacy characters come into a new show, it's really, really exciting just for one episode, guest stars, whatever. Now, Legacy have the option of bringing guest stars across from Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and The Next Generation. Star Trek Academy has the option of bringing characters back from Star Trek Discovery. And that's it. So, again, limited. So when comparing Academy to Legacy, I also think about the sort of storylines that are possible. Obviously, Academy is going to be, like I said, character-driven. It's going to be set in a school, basically. It's going to be Hogwarts with aliens. Maybe not. But there will be episodes where they can go aboard brand new starships, starships we've never seen before. And as a Trekkie, I quite like new starships. I actually almost like the Discovery after her refit. Almost, not quite. I still think she's ugly. And the Spore Drive, I'm sorry, it's stupid. Um, I, You'll never convince me otherwise. It shouldn't be in sci-fi. It's a ridiculous idea. And that's, to be honest, is one of the reasons that put me off Discovery very early on, because that was such a stupid idea. Um, actually makes me a little angry. But the one thing that Star Trek Academy does have going for it that I'm actually really excited about is getting to see new starships. I'm a geek for it. I love that sort of thing. I love the new technology. But that is actually a little bit of a negative for Star Trek Legacy. One of the things that worries me a little bit about Legacy is actually the Enterprise herself. Now, we can have that discussion about whether she should have been even called the Enterprise. She's the Titan. She just is. But actually, the whole premise of the vessel is confusing. So she's a refit Titan. So she had bits from the original Titan, Riker's Titan, aboard her. Because um, some of his memory banks and stuff were still there in the, in the computer hidden. The nacelles and stuff were from the Titan and blah, blah, blah. But she's a completely different type of vessel. So they've completely reconfigured it. The only thing I can think of is actually they actually got two ships and sort of like stuck them together. You're like, you know, like if you get a new car and they say like, oh, this is this is a death trap. It's been it's actually two cars stuck. It's one that's had an accident from the back and an accident from the front. And they've cut them off and put them together to give you a new car. It's a death trap. It's not the prettiest Star Trek ship ever built. I have to admit, it's pretty low down. It's probably my least favourite Enterprise from a visuals point of view. But there are certain angles where it looks great. And um, I am a little bit conflicted about it because there's bits I really dislike and bits I really do like. But the main thing is, technologically, the Enterprise G is quite a weak vessel. The Shrike handed it its ass to it repeatedly. Um, Captain Shaw didn't even want to engage the strike because he was just like, no, it's going to kill us straight away. Now, she has had a year in space dock having a refit. So maybe they'll write into it that she is, um, you know, a slightly more powerful vessel now. But I suspect they won't because I suspect the writers will basically do that. She's the plucky underdog type of role for the Enterprise. Now, that'll make it very interesting for stories. But as a Trekkie, I'm thinking, this is the flagship. Come on, make her at least as good as other vessels in the fleet. At least make her as good as the vessel that came before it. But no, they've made that decision. 
We can blame Terry Metalis for that, even though he gave, brought us a brilliant season of Star Trek Picard. I do think that was a mistake. But there is one fundamental point here that I want to make. Legacy is a TV show that fans are really excited about, that are desperate for, that was actually a spin-off from a season of Picard that we all pretty much universally loved. Star Trek Academy is a spin-off from a show that has been very, very divisive among Star Trek fans. Some fans adore Discovery. Some fans generally think it's the best Star Trek ever. Other fans, like me, just don't like it. But there's a big chunk of Star Trek fans that absolutely hate it. And that actually get really angry about Discovery episodes. So to be honest, I only see Star Trek Academy as being divisive again. I think it's going to be something that a lot of people shout woke at. I think it's going to have a lot of younger actors and younger characters in it that aren't really relatable to me in my mid-40s, even though it should be, because I do remember being that age, so it should be. For this show to actually work, it's going to require the writers to really pull off a very impressive trick here, because the setup and the premise is weak for me. And if this show is good, it's going to be because of brilliant writing. They've actually, I just feel like they've made it hard for themselves from the beginning, though. Legacy? If they make a bad show out of Legacy, then it's going to be because of really bad writing. Because they've made that very easy for themselves. And to be honest, if it's a bad show, I really don't know what to do with Star Trek anymore. Everything is set up for Legacy. Everything, in a way, is set up against Academy. In some ways, I actually hope that Academy is a brilliant show because, you know, it'll be a surprise. And I love going into a new TV show or a movie or anything with one set of expectations and being proved wrong. That is brilliant. But I suspect that won't be the case. But I implore all of you guys to give it a try. I know I keep making a joke about it being Star Trek 90210. And, you know, there. But this is a show that we should try to love. And if it is good, oh, it'll be a glorious way to see new Star Trek. And, you know, set in the future. Isn't that what we all want? But guys, get in the comments and tell me what you think. Will these two shows build those bridges or will they widen the gulf of division? I'd love to know exactly what you think about the possibilities of both of these shows. So get into the comments and tell me. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack if you are desperate to see these videos sooner because most of them premiere on there first. Finally, go to sidetrack.co.uk, which is our dedicated website. And we do stories based on a lot of our videos. And we try to add a bit more information for you to digest. Go check that out too. As always, please stay safe. Live long and prosper. And I'll see you next time.